Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and this is the Apple Watch Ultra. This is Apple's latest top of the line Apple Watch, but it's not for everyone. We'll unbox it, set it up and take a first look and then compare it with the Series 7 and Series 8 size watches. Now this comes in at $799 and it comes with one finish option. So you can see here on the back, it says Ultra Titanium Case with the Green Alpine Loop at 49 millimeters. And I selected the large Green Alpine Loop. Now you could order this with the trail loop. And if you did order it with a trail loop, most likely your order was delayed. That loop is not available anywhere. So my original order was delayed because of it, but they do have the Alpine loop. And I also have the ocean band here as well. We'll take a look at now let's go ahead and open it up and you only get one option. So you've got titanium. There's no color options or anything else. So we'll pull this back, open it up. And inside we have a little booklet. It says Apple watch. So this is a little bit different. You'll see Alpine ocean and trail, the different loops here. The next page goes over the outside of it. We'll do that in a moment. goes over different buttons, the different watch faces with the compass. And then in the back, we have some paperwork here. And again, this is a little bit different. So it looks like we've just got this little pamphlet here and it's your warranty card. Let's set that aside and take a closer look at the watch. So we've got the watch and inside here you'll see it's a little mountain scene, snowy mountain with some trees. And this paper feels a little bit rough, sort of like construction paper, but a little higher end than that. Now we'll set the ocean loop aside and underneath here, we have the new band in green. Again, we'll put that over here until we can unbox it. And here's the Apple watch ultra. So let's flip it over. Nothing to really see here, but some pull tabs. So let's go ahead and open that up. Then we'll pull the other pull tab off. And then on the side of the box, it says ultra titanium case. So let's open it up here. We'll open it up, nothing inside. And you'll see here's the watch itself on the left, on the right, it says designed by Apple in California and it gives coordinates. I would imagine this is probably Apple park and let's open that up. And it's a new charger with a braided cable. So we have USB C and then we have a charger here to open it up and we'll also test this with other chargers, but this is very similar to what you get with the stainless steel charger, but you have that braided cable, which is always nice. Very similar to what you get with an iMac, but it's USB C. And then of course to your Apple watch charger, let me put that back and then we'll take a closer look at the watch itself. So we'll put this back for now, I'll just set it in here like that. And let's look at the Apple watch. So here's the watch. And that's a bit heavier than I thought it would be. And this is actually 61.3 grams versus 51.5 grams of the series eight stainless steel. So it's heavier than stainless steel. So definitely a little bit bigger. Let's take the cover off it or the wrapper off it. There we go. And there's the watch itself. Let me put the box aside and let's take a closer look. Now you can see the display is flat and we have a raised lip around the outside edge. However, this is Sapphire crystal. So it probably won't scratch unless you bumped into maybe a diamond with it. And you can see that raised lip around the outside edge. Of course, the lip sits on top of the watch itself. And then of course on the bottom, you can see what it looks like. So we have ceramic on the bottom with four different screws. And then of course your little clips to put in the Apple watch bands and we'll test those in a moment. If we go around the outside edge, you'll see here, if we start from this side, we have a three mic array, according to Apple, then we have our side button. And then we also have a larger digital crown and it's also got a crown guard around it. And then in front of that, we actually have a depth gauge. If we go around to the other side, on the other side, we actually have a GPS antenna. So it's a dual band GPS antenna, which uses L1 and L5 frequencies. We also have dual speakers. We have a programmable action button. And then we also have a siren capable of 86 decibels up to 600 feet away or 180 meters is how far people can hear you from. Internally, it's got an S8 chipset with a 64 bit dual core processor, the same as the series eight and the SE, and it has Bluetooth 5.3. Of course, with all of this casing, it has a hundred meter water resistance. It's swim proof and recreational dive proof up to 40 meters. 
It's IP6X certified and mill standard 810H. So all of those things are within this watch. On the bottom, we have the same set of sensors that we do with the Series 8, such as heart rate sensors and the new temperature sensor. It won't tell you your temperature, but it will just tell you if there's a change in temperature. So it has that as well. Let's compare it with the Series 7 and Series 8. This is actually a Series 7 but it's the same size as the Series 8. So you can see side by side, there's a very big difference. Of course, we have a different display. We have a much thicker case, although it's not as thick as I thought it would be compared to what others had been saying. So a little bit thicker there on the side. If we put them close together with the digital crown, you'll see it's definitely about a quarter longer, maybe a little bit taller. And then of course, it's definitely thicker. If we look at the actual width, it's definitely wider there and you can see the overall size. Now, of course your regular bands will fit in this and let's take a look at the other band so we can put that on and then set up the watch, but your regular bands will fit in this just fine. So if you have a bunch of bands you've had for years with your regular Apple watch and you want to use those recreationally, of course you can do that. So it doesn't matter if it's this band, or if it's just the standard silicone band that comes with it, you can use all of them as long as they're the 45 millimeter compatible bands. So any of those, your nylon bands included with this USA band, you'll see here. So of course you'll want to match it to whatever you like, but either way, all of those bands will work. Now let's open up this band and then we'll get it set up. Now this is the Alpine loop. It does come in a few different colors. Green seem to not stand out the most, but they also have an orange color and let's see what we've got here. So this is $99. In fact, all of their new watch bands are $99. So let's go ahead and open it up. There we go. And we can unfold it like this. So this is a little bit different. It's just a little card style here. We've got our little paperwork in the back and then of course the loop itself. So this is just stuck in here, similar to what we have with most of the Apple watches. And then here's the loop itself. So up close, you can see it's sort of a woven nylon. It's very light. I expected it to be heavier. And then you've got a little loop that sits in here to hold everything in place. So it looks pretty great. Let me go ahead and get it attached. So we'll plug it in this way. This is according to the picture anyway. And then like this, and then it goes on your wrist. So we can bring it around like this. My wrists are pretty large. So you'll see here comes around like that. And then we can hook it into place wherever we want it. So that's pretty good. It looks pretty normal on my wrists as my hands are huge, but that gives you an idea of what it looks like. Let me take this off and let's get it set up. So this is a little tricky to remove, but it's not going anywhere. It's definitely secured on your wrist. So let's boot it up here. So we'll press and hold the button here. Give it just a moment to turn on. And this display should be super bright. We'll see what it looks like in sunlight in a little bit, but it should go up to 2000 nits. So let's let it boot up here for just a moment. And we'll check out a few different things with the OS as well. So let's hook this back here so it doesn't get in our way. And Let's take a closer look. Now it's the normal setup with an Apple watch. Let's bring over our phone. You'll see immediately it sees it. We'll hit continue. And it says, set it up for myself or a family member. So you can do either one of those, give it just a moment. And now we scan the sort of digital nebula here. Give it just a moment to connect and then we'll continue. Now it says your Apple watch is paired and it says, make this your new watch. So we can tap continue or we can customize it from here. So we'll hit continue. We'll give it just a moment. It says connecting your Apple watch. This may take a moment. Now it wants me to create a passcode. So we'll do that. We'll do that on the watch itself. We'll just pick one, two, three, four for now. We'll change that later. And then we'll continue setup. Now it says optimize charge limit. And this is great because sometimes your Apple watch stops charging and it can be a bit confusing. However, it's telling you what it is, where it says, if you see an open charge ring, Apple watch will charge to an optimized limit. This limit adapts to your daily usage and preserves your battery lifespan over time. You can manage this in battery settings on your Apple watch. We'll hit continue. Now you'll see it says safety. Apple watch can help in an emergency. It talks about emergency SOS, fall detection during workouts, crash detection, as well as the siren you can use here as well. We'll hit continue. And now we can set up cellular. Now, just like we set up an eSIM on the new iPhone, I actually want to carry over my cellular setup from the watch here to my left. So we'll set up cellular. We'll give it just a moment. 
and it says this should take only a few seconds to complete. Since I already have service, we'll tap on transfer and hit continue. Again, just give it a moment here. And then it says, thank you for your purchase. I'm not purchasing anything. I'm just moving it. We'll hit continue setup. And it says installing will be ready soon. And then we can continue. So we'll tap continue. Now we can customize the action button. So I haven't seen these menus before, but we can select it for a workout, a stopwatch or a waypoint. So we can select waypoint as we're maybe hiking, or we can just tap the button to go right into a workout, or we can set it up later. We'll hit continue. And now it says Apple Watch is syncing. So this will take a little bit of time and it says get to know your Apple Watch. That's pretty typical. Every time you set up a new Apple Watch, it's going to walk you through different things while it completes setup. So again, we'll give this just a moment to complete and then we'll take a look at it. Now it says welcome to Apple Watch. So we'll hit OK here. We'll put in our passcode. And on the watch, it says Wi-Fi calling emergency address updated. So we'll tap OK, and you'll see it moved everything over from the previous watch to this one. So this is actually Infograph Modular. Of course, there's a new watch face here as well. So it's modular now. They used to call it Infograph Modular with the app Lumi in the middle. Now let's go ahead and add a watch face. It has a new Wayfinder watch face, so we'll press the plus button here. And let's go ahead and scroll to the bottom since it should be alphabetical. There we go. You'll see Wayfinder. So let's go ahead and add that. And then of course we have different styles. So we can select minute or hour. We'll keep it minute. Then we can go over to the bezel where we have latitude and longitude. We have elevation and incline or none. So we'll select elevation and incline. Then let's go to the next. Of course we have different colors. We can change it to. We can select ocean. Let's keep ocean here for now. We also have adventure. And then if we go over, we've got all of our different complications. So there's a ton of different things we can add here. So if we want to add compass waypoints, last view waypoint, last viewed waypoints and more. So you'll see here that you have the camera remote. Let's just select that for now. And I think we're done at this point. So we'll press the button, go back to the wayfinder watch face. So as we turn here, you'll see the actual height or elevation changes. And that's pretty nice. Of course, you can make this a compass ring that turns as well, but let's go home and let's go down to settings. So we'll go down to settings and under settings, let's go to general. There's probably an update as well, but let's go to about and under about, you'll see that it's actually version 9.0 that comes with it. If we scroll down, you'll see available storage says 25.51 gigabytes and its capacity is 32 gigabytes. So that's something I didn't see elsewhere. And also let's see if we have a software update as yesterday, Apple released a new Apple watch update to 9.0.1. So I'll install that a little bit later, but we also have some new apps here. So if we scroll down, of course you can feel this with haptic feedback. So we have a new watch face for depth. So if maybe you jump into water, you can have it open automatically if it senses water and then it will actually sense depth. Now, aside from depth, we have a new siren app. So if we go down, I'll see siren here and it should be pretty loud. We'll go into the app itself and let's just play this and then I'll turn it back off. And so it sort of builds the sound as far as the levels goes, it builds that sound up and that's what it sounds like. Now, if we press our action button or activity button on the side, we can go right into a workout. So we could select a workout here, press it again, and it brings us to the actual turn off screen where we can activate the siren, medical ID, compass backtrack, or emergency call SOS. So let's go back out of that. Now with this, we should get 36 hours of normal battery life and 60 hours on low power mode. But Apple says that's actually coming later this year. So if we go into the battery, we actually have low power mode. So I'm not sure why it says coming later this year, we could turn this on, but it disables a ton of features. So I wouldn't necessarily do that. 
Also, there's a dive computer app coming later with oceanic plus, as far as their app, where you'll actually be able to use this as a main dive computer. So that's something that's coming a little bit later this year. Now let's take a look at the display since it goes up to 2000 nits outside, just like the new iPhone outside. You can see that the Apple watch ultra is easy to read. At least it is for me. The series seven is a little bit more difficult to read. The series eight was the same outside as well. Now let's go ahead and remove these and let's see how they charge on the duo charger from Apple. I had someone ask me about this. I have it plugged into an anchor cable lightning to 30 watt adapter and let's remove this since this is a larger sized Apple watch. Some people said it doesn't work properly or it's not compatible. And then Apple actually gave some guidance on how to actually charge it on this charger. So if we pop up this charging pat platform here, you'll see seems like it's charging just fine. So if you put this here and you don't tilt it all the way up, you want to tilt it back a little bit. It gives you enough room on the bottom to actually charge your watch with more than enough room. So one more time here, we'll place it on and you'll see it begins to charge. So no issues with this. You just need to tilt it down ever so slightly. Now let's go ahead and open up the ocean band. Now they're all $99. This is the midnight color. You also have a yellow and white, but all of the bands this year are $99, at least the first three series of bands for the ultra watches. Now that's the same price as this watch band as well. So it's not cheap, but that's what Apple's charging. If you want to use their first party bands. Now let's go ahead and open this up. So we'll take the, the little pull tab off. There we go. Let's open it up. And I do like the packaging in here again, same little literature. And then we have the band itself. So this is sort of a rubberized band. Let's see if we can remove this. There we go. Pull out the other side and then we have a little loop here. And so this comes apart so you can fit it around the part of the loop that you want. So this sort of fits into the loop. So what that means is you can fit it here so that it adheres properly over here. So as it goes around your wrist, this may not fit my wrist though. So let's try that out. Oh, there we go. There it snapped into place. It just took a little extra force there. So let's try this side here. That one was a little bit easier. I don't think this is going to fit my wrist or maybe it will just barely. Let's see. Now I can use the very bottom. Now, if we want this to stay in place, you'll see it's nicely in place there. They do make an extended one as well. That's $50. But if we want this to stay in place, we can put this maybe on the second rung here. We take this apart like this. And then we fit it through just like that and then clamp it back together. So now we have a little loop oh, wrong. There we go. Clamp it back together. We have a little loop and now we can place it on our wrist again. So again, it fits like this, the ocean band, and then it can hold in place like that. Maybe I'll move it up one more, but this is very comfortable. It's stretchy too. So if we take this back off, you'll see this material actually stretches a bit. So, seems pretty nice. And like I said, this should fit pretty well. Although maybe if they make an extended loop here, I'll get a bigger one, but let's see if we can move this over. This is a little fiddly too. So if we put this here, it should work a little better. And there we go. So it seems like it's going to be a very comfortable band, especially if you're going into water a lot, this should work really nice. So let's go ahead and clamp that in. There we are. And now it's in place. Now, overall speed should be the same as before since it has the same processor. So no difference there, but you just get that extended battery life, a brighter display, a larger watch itself, and it has more capabilities. Now I really like the Apple watch ultra. This is definitely more my style than the other watches, but I'm not really that much of an outdoors person. However, this is cheaper than the last titanium watch I had. So it's something a little bit different. It sets it apart from the other Apple watches, but let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I think if you're looking at an Apple watch, you want something that's very outdoor focused, whether you're a triathlete, you dive a lot, or maybe you just want something a little bit different. You go on hikes a lot. This would be perfect for you. But if you don't care about all of that, of course, the other Apple watch is about half the price at 45 millimeters. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Of course, I'll be testing it for a while. And if there's anything else you want to know about it, let me know in the comments as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. 
I'll see you next time.